Hi everyone, and welcome back to Reading for Fluency. Today we are going to work on chapter 23. I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Are you ready? Let's grab our books and get started. 110 years ago, Green Lake was the largest lake in Texas. It was full of clear, cool water, and it sparkled like a giant emerald in the sun. It was especially, especially, especially beautiful in the spring when the peach trees, which lined the shore, bloomed with pink and rose-colored blossoms. Hmm, sounds nice. There was always a town picnic, picnic on the 4th, 4th of July. They'd play games, dance, sing, and swim in the lake to keep cool. Prize, prizes, zizz, prizes were awarded for the best peach pie and peach jam. Mm, that sounds good. A special prize was given every year to Miss Catherine Barlow for her fabulous, fabulous spiced, spiced, right? Spiced peaches. No one else even tried to make spiced peaches because they knew none could be as delicious as hers. Hmm. Every summer, Miss Catherine would pick bushel, oh, oh, bushels of peaches and preserve, preserve them in jars with cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, and other spices which she kept secret. The jarred peaches would last all winter. They probably would have lasted a lot longer than that, but they were always eaten by the end of winter. Let's read it back. 110 years ago, Green Lake was the largest lake in Texas. It was full of clear, cool water, and it sparkled like a giant emerald in the sun. It was especially beautiful in the spring when the peach trees, which lined the shore, bloomed with pink and rose-colored blossoms. There was always a town picnic on the 4th of July. They'd play games, dance, sing, and swim in the lake to keep cool. Prizes were awarded for the best peach pie and peach jam. A special prize was given every year to Miss Catherine Barlow for her famous spiced peaches. No one else even tried to make spiced peaches because they knew none could be as delicious as hers. Every summer, Miss Catherine would pick bushels of peaches and preserve them in jars with cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, and other spices which she kept secret. The jarred peaches would last all winter. They probably would have lasted a lot longer than that, but they were always eaten by the end of winter. Mm, they sound good. It was said that Green Lake was heaven on earth and that Miss Catherine's spiced peaches were food for the angels. Catherine Barlow was the town's only school teacher. She taught in an old one-room schoolhouse. It was old even then. The roof leaked, leaked. The windows wouldn't open. The door hung crooked on its bent hinges. She was a wonderful teacher, full of knowledge and full of life. Mm, sounds nice. The children loved her. She taught classes in the evening for adults. Mm, I do too. And many of the adults loved her as well. She was very pretty. Her classes were often full of young men Ooh. who were a lot more interested in the teacher 
than they were in getting an education. Education. But all they got, ugh, but all they ever got was an education. One such young man was Trout, Trout Walker. His real name was Charles Walker. But everyone called him Trout because his two feet smelled like a couple of dead fish. <laughs> oh, it's gross. This wasn't entirely Trout's fault. He had an incurable, incurable foot fungus. Ugh. In fact, it was the same foot fungus that a hundred and ten years later would affect, afflict, ooh, afflict, would afflict the famous ball player Clyde Livingston. But at least Clyde Livingston showered every day. Good job. I take a bath every Sunday morning, Trout would brag, whether I need to or not. Ooh. Most everyone in the town of Green Lake expected Miss Catherine to marry Trout Walker. Ugh. He was the son of the richest man in the county. His family owned most of the peach trees and all the land on the east side of the lake. Whew, let's read it back. It was said that Green Lake was heaven on earth and that Miss Catherine's spiced peaches were food for the angels. Catherine Barlow was the town's only school teacher. She taught in an old one-room schoolhouse. It was old even then. The roof leaked. The windows wouldn't open. The door hung crooked on the bent hinges. She was a wonderful teacher, full of knowledge and full of life. The children loved her. She taught classes in the evening for the adults, and many of the adults loved her as well. She was very pretty. Her classes were often full of young men who were a lot more interested in the teacher than they were in getting an education. But all they ever got was an education. One such young man was Trout Walker. His real name was Charles Walker, but everyone called him Trout because his two feet smelled like a couple of dead fish. This wasn't entirely Trout's fault. He had an incurable foot fungus. In fact, it was the same foot fungus that 110 years later would afflict the famous ball player Clyde Livingston. But at least Clyde Livingston showered every day. I take a bath every Sunday morning, Trout would brag, whether I need to or not. Most everyone in town of Green Lake expected Miss Catherine to marry Trout Walker. He was the son of the richest man in the county. His family owned most of the peach trees and all the land on the east side of the lake. I don't know, could you marry someone with a foot fungus? Let me know. <laughs> Would you marry a beautiful man or a beautiful woman if they had an incurable foot fungus? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Trout often showed up at night school, but never paid attention. He talked in class and was disrespectful, disrespectful of the students around him. He was loud and stupid. A lot of men in town were not educated. That didn't bother Miss Catherine. She knew They'd spent most of their lives working on farms and ranches and hadn't had much schooling. That was why she was there, to teach them. But Trout didn't want to learn. He seemed to be proud of his stupidity. 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 How would you like to take a ride on my new boat this Saturday? He asked her one evening after class. No, thank you, said Miss Catherine. We've got a brand new boat, he said. You don't even have to row it. Yes, I know, said Miss Catherine. Everyone in town had seen and heard the walker's new boat. It made a horrible, loud noise and spewed ugly black smoke over the beautiful lake. 
Trout had always gotten everything he ever wanted. He found it hard to believe that Miss Catherine had turned him down. He pointed his finger at her and said, No one ever says no to Charles Walker. I believe I just did, said Catherine Barlow. Ooh, I like her. <laughs> Let's read it back. Ready? Trout often showed up at night school, but never paid attention. He talked in class and was disrespectful of the students around him. He was loud and stupid. A lot of men in town were not educated. And that didn't bother Miss Catherine. She knew they'd spent most of their lives working on farms and ranches and hadn't had much schooling. That was why she was there, to teach them. But Trout didn't want to learn. He seemed to be proud of his stupidity. How, ugh, <laughs> how would you like to take a ride on my new boat this Saturday? He asked one evening after class. No, thank you, said Miss Catherine. We've got a brand new boat, he said. You don't even have to row it. Yes, I know, said Miss Catherine. Everyone in town had seen and heard the walker's new boat. It made a horrible loud noise and spewed ugly black smoke over the beautiful lake. Trout had always gotten everything he ever wanted. He found it hard to believe that Miss Catherine had turned him down. He pointed his finger at her and said, No one ever says no to Charles Walker. I believe I just did, said Catherine Barlow. And good for her. Oof. He's got stinky feet and a bad attitude. I don't like him. I wonder what's going to happen. So, would you marry someone who has incurable foot fungus? <laughs> and what do you think is going to happen? Because she said no to Trout Walker. Hmm. Stinky feet. Ew. I had fun today, and I hope you did too. I'll see you for the next one. Bye.